Hello, my name is Lily Chaudhry, and you're listening to Happiness Now, Secrets to Success from the East and West. This podcast is all about empowering us to achieve happiness and success in every aspect of our life, whether it be in love, career, finances, or relationships. And we'll discover some of the wisdom that's found in different cultures about this topic. These talks are based on the works of Ghassim Ali Shah. He's a renowned teacher, trainer, and motivational speaker, and author for over 15 years based in Lahore, Pakistan. Big events like graduating or getting married, having a baby, buying a house, they're too few and far between to wait for. These privileges, these blessings are there for all of us, but only a few of us seem to be really cherishing them. Many of us are so badly trapped and absorbed in worries and frustrations that we can't see the beautiful colors of life. Many of us are just tired, tired of trying at life. And that's where life skills come in, skills that can help us live life to the fullest. So instead of trying to jostle that plane, you start flying it in a proper way. Learning life skills can greatly improve the quality of our life. Let's start with the first and arguably the most important life skill, communication. This is the king of all skills. Tony Robbins, the definitive father of life coaching today, says the way we communicate with others and with ourselves ultimately determines the quality of our lives. The essence of this skill is to learn to be able to convey our thoughts and ideas in a clear way, plus be able to comprehend the communication of others. And we shouldn't undervalue the importance of self-talk, what we say to ourselves. Robin says the, the quality of your life is directly proportional to the quality of conversation between you and you. So if our self-talk is positive, empowering, encouraging, uplifting, then our quality of life will certainly improve. And we'll have another episode coming up soon on effective communication, where we detail some of those factors that we should have to have more of an impact in our communication. The next essential skill that we need for a successful life is learning to say no. This really comes down to our judgment of situations and of people. The achiever and successful person knows how to say no and have greater control over his life. The average person is just too considerate to say no. A scholar once wrote, most of the people squander themselves squabbling about irrelevant things, hampering their own advancement towards their real destiny. Sometimes a simple yes or no saves us a lot of time and grief. And just as important as learning when to say no and when to say yes is whom to say no and whom to say yes to. The people and things that we avoid tell as much about our personality as do the people and the things that we embrace or spend our time on. And I really believe this myself. I know people who do so much for others, they never say no, yet they always seem to be miserable about it. And I know with my schedule, I definitely can't help people too much. I spend most of my energy and time on my immediate family. But that means I do end up saying no a lot. And it's not great to turn down someone, but I do have to prioritize my responsibilities come first and everything and everyone comes later. And I remember just last year, I was nominated by a friend of mine to be on some parent-teacher committee um, or something, which I would have loved to do, but I had to say no. My evenings after work are spent just scrambling to make dinner for my family. And if any of you know Indian or Pakistani food, you know it takes a lot of time. Roti and curry are not the quickest dinner options out there. (laughs) So yeah, I have people in my life that might not be so happy with me because I have to say no to them for some reason. But saying no is important sometimes and can come with having priorities. Speaking of priorities, well, that's our next life skill. So number three is learning to prioritize. Many people aren't clear about what their priorities are. I mean, how often do we ask ourselves, what matters in life? What things are most important to us? What's our purpose in life? What purposeful actions have I taken today? And we should be constantly asking ourselves these questions before making decisions. Otherwise, we end up wasting so much time in our life on things that don't matter to us instead of focusing on those things that are most important to us. And these are the things that will ultimately make us happy and successful. Even when it comes to listening to Gossam Ali Shah lectures, I try and hear at least one of his talks every day or two, not just for this podcast, but because I feel like it helps me in life. But that means that I don't get to do some of the fun things like binging on my favorite junk TV shows like The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. But I know that giving time to more important things will give me more satisfaction eventually, later in life. It'll help me achieve my goals. But I do still manage to squeeze in watching Housewives. (laughs) So moving on, the next life skill is socializing or social skills. Learning how to carry ourselves how to deal with people or how to ask for something. 
how to negotiate for something, things like that. We can't get anywhere in life without people. Rarely do great people achieve great things all by themselves. And if we can remember that if our attitude is like that of the greatest people who've walked on this earth, like the saints, the prophets, the best leaders, then God will elevate us. He'll make us great as well. Because improving our internal attitude will improve our behavior with others and in turn improve our relationships. And we rarely do that. We never really work to improve our internal attitudes. Mother Teresa once said, kind words can be short and easy to speak, but their echoes are truly endless. And she's right. Our interactions with others can change our lives forever. I mean, I've never been great at socializing, I think. Um, I remember even in college, I used to hear some of my friends say that, oh, some people think you're just stuck up walking around campus. But really, I was kind of clueless of people around me or kind of shy. And I'm not one of those people who are naturally very smiley. And plus, I'm terrible with names. So most people who know me know this. I know that's bad and I have to change that. But sometimes I would just avoid situations where I would have to chat with people, like on campus. But I remember that. And now, but now I try to make an effort to smile or say a quick hello if I see someone. I don't think it's such a bad idea to make ourselves a bit uncomfortable, even if it's just to avoid having someone else feel uncomfortable. But socializing is a skill that can be learned, and it's well worth it. It enables us to connect with people and then achieve greater things than we ever imagined possible. And this takes us to our next skill. So the next skill, number five, is the skill of thinking. That's the philosophy articulated by motivational writer and coach David J. Schwartz in his book, The Magic of Thinking Big. He says, believe it can be done. When you believe something can be done, really believe, your mind will find the ways to do it. Believing a solution paves the way to that solution. Nature has big plans for us, but the fruition of those plans depends on how big we think. If we go and ask some college students today, what are their career aspirations? What kind of salary do they want to make? The majority will probably not go beyond whatever the going rate or going average salary is. And if we ask them, why aren't you expecting to make millions? They'll say, well, that's not possible or it's unrealistic. They don't seem to understand that there are plenty of people out there making millions and doing it in careers that they love. And most of us, and the truth is most of us, just merely think of earning a living. We don't think of making a fortune. A famous trainer once said, a person who aims to just earn a living never make any notable financial progress. So we need to think big to be big, to do big and to achieve big. But the question first is whether we think at all. Bernard Shaw said 2% of the people think, 3% people think that they think, and 95% of the people would rather die than think. When he said this, he wasn't just being funny, he was addressing a really harsh reality. An extremely small percentage of us would say that we've had teachers in our lives who were original thinkers or whose lessons were motivating or capable to inspire some curiosity in us. So if teachers don't have this skill, it seems idealistic to imagine their students will be asked to be skilled thinkers. One of the greatest think tanks in the world is Edward D. Bono, the founder of this thinking platform. He emphasizes on learning to think. Since we're never taught how to think, we start believing that thinking is like a random thing. But it's not. It's a complete science, something that can't be done successfully without conscious effort. He stresses that the science should be taught to kids and grown-ups alike. One of his recommended exercises is practicing to think and create imaginary situations and think of possible ways of responding. So if we imagine that we're stranded alone on a desert island, or just think of some example of uncertainty, and now we have to think of all the ways to get out of the situation, to resolve it, the more possibilities our mind can think of, the more active it is. Whereas the feeling of helplessness will be a sign that our mind is bad at this skill of thinking. Whenever a person is faced with a lack of possibilities, of options, irrational anger can get a hold of him. Violence is the same way. It results in having a lack of options in our mind. And a lack of options is caused by one's inability to think properly. So thinking empowers us to create new possibilities. Napoleon Hill, the famous American author who is one of the early producers of personal success literature and also an advisor to presidents Wilson and Roosevelt, Thomas Edison, Shojiro Ishibashi, the founder of Bridgestone Tires, the world's largest tire maker, all had one thing in common. The three are all reported to practice a unique thinking ritual. 
Every year, they used to disconnect from their homes and workplaces and head to the forest or some secluded area for a couple weeks at a time to spend thinking and debating about a wide range of issues, believing that this exercise would expand their intellect. So these great minds may have been onto something, and that's what real teaching is supposed to do, instigate curiosity in us, not just feed us information. And because many of us didn't have that, we have to learn this skill ourselves. The thinking mind is never short of possibilities and opportunities, and people like these inventors and entrepreneurs exemplified this truth. The sixth important life skill is self-management. Poor self-management can make us more aggressive, more emotional, more vulnerable, more dissatisfied. People who don't learn to manage themselves can end up committing suicide for this reason. I actually know someone who is a very successful business owner. Years back, this person quit his job and became an entrepreneur. And he's a self-made man, he had a true success story. But he shared with me that he had some pretty dark days. After messy divorce, he was at such a low that he attempted to end his life. Luckily, he was unsuccessful at that, and now he's turned his pain into passion for his company. And we probably all know people who are apparently very successful in their lives, but are discontented and unhappy. And this is because they don't know how to live with their own self. They don't realize that the major chunk of our lives we end up spending with our own selves, not with awards or money or title. And that's what a person who has the skill of self-management will realize, that we ourselves are in control of our emotions and not any external force. The seventh life skill that we'll discuss is the skill of learning. We actually need to learn how to learn. People who are good at learning things will definitely succeed in their lives. And we should always try and discover new ways of learning. To illustrate, a few years back, Qasem Lisha, whose works are the inspiration of this podcast, realized that most of the radio talk shows near him were full of irrelevant political debates or some other nonsense. So he started a radio show in which he would call different guests who had made their mark in their respective fields, people who had attained some kind of big success in their careers or lives. He says that after interviewing almost 100 people for his show, he felt that he had grown so much in his knowledge, in his vision and in his outlook in life. He said that the show was actually to uplift others and motivate others, but it ended up uplifting himself. He says it increased his exposure because the way that we see the world is based on our own exposure. And if our exposure is limited, we'll certainly have a narrow view of the world and people in it. A broader exposure to the world makes a person more sympathetic, more humble, more civilized and selfless. There's no personal growth without the growth of our exposure, exposing ourselves to the constructive side of the world. People with limited exposure also have a stagnant internal attitude. And if we start increasing our exposure to better things, to better people, then we'll see that there's always something to change, to increase, to upgrade, to improve. And exposing ourselves to learning new things makes us realize this. The next skill I'll talk about is goal setting, becoming a goal-oriented person. This is hugely important. History shows that having goals or having a purpose has been the ultimate motivator behind all great achievements. A teenager ends up building windows and goes on to become the richest man on the planet, Bill Gates. He had a purpose. People are born and then they die. But only those people are remembered in history who were purpose-driven. If our presence adds value to this world, our absence will be felt. Otherwise, one day we'll be one of the many resting in an unknown grave in an unknown graveyard somewhere. And we shouldn't be worried about the recognition, but we should be worried about finding our own calling and then living our calling. This in itself is success, but this comes with goal setting. Robin Sharma, the best-selling Canadian writer and motivational speaker who also incorporates Eastern and Western spirituality in his talks, once said, don't live the same year 75 times and call it a life. So we should be constantly focused on achieving something greater than where we are now. And the last skill that we'll talk about is leadership. We need to strive to be a leader without a title. To again, borrow a phrase from Robin Sharma. We have to learn to lead in different aspects of our life. Leading in our schools, our, our homes, our workplace, wherever we can. A true leader can transform a family, a business, or a country. And there are thousands of examples of this. Mahatma Gandhi was born in an average family, but he grew up to lead his people in a unique way. He ended up leading the people of India to fight against the British silently through non-violence. He led people in civil disobedience, in boycotts of foreign goods, and through his own unique leadership, he helped drive out British rule, giving India back its freedom. 
But oftentimes, even more important than leading others is that we have to lead ourselves, lead our own lives. And many of us are not leading our own lives. We're being pulled and pushed by others. And we can learn to lead our energies, our emotions, our resources. And if we become the captain of our own ship, it'll be our own purpose, our own passion that'll lead us through life, leaving us to achieve whatever it is that we aspire for. So in conclusion, these are just some of the most important life skills that we should know. Again, communication, learning to say no, prioritizing, social skills, thinking, self-management, learning, goal setting, and leadership. And we should try to set some time aside to discover and learn these skills because they can greatly uplift our lives, improve the quality of our life, help us flourish and make progress in our lives. These are effective tools that can help us live life to the fullest and help us achieve those things that are most important to us, which will then lead us to success and happiness. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast and we hope you'll keep tuning in. We have a new podcast coming out every Sunday. We welcome your comments and questions. You can message us on our website, www.happinessnowpodcast.com or contact us through Facebook. So until next time, take care and take control.